one from Vietnam. You... Yes. Uh, we're fine, thank you. Listen, we need your help. I think we are being kidnapped tomorrow morning. It's beautiful. Everest. I was so excited for my first ever solo backpacking trip. Of all places, I chose Tibet. You know, the land of snow, the kingdom of Buddhism. It was supposed to be one heck of a trip. Not all this crazy kidnap thing. <clears throat> Go on. Yeah? Why did you come to Tibet? I'm one. Pronounce like one, two, three, one. From Vietnam. Currently based in Japan. And I'm um, a storyteller. My stories are inspired by my real traveling and life experiences. So they are flawed and emotional and honest. All I ask in return is five minutes of your patience. If you like what you have, stay longer. Yeah? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Okay. <sighs> For the first story, I'll tell you about my very first solo backpacking trip to Tibet. The land of snow, the kingdom of Buddhism. In the next 15 minutes, I'll explain how it all started and why Tibet. To give you some idea, I was born and raised in Vietnam until 18. University and graduate school in Japan. Now I am working in Tokyo. I traveled to Tibet on New Year 2020. But it all began five years before that. I was alone in my college library in Kyushu, South Japan. My college stood on top of a mountain overlooking the Beppu Bay. Nighttime had washed away April's greenery. Moonlight on the grasses fluttered under the wind like smithereens of the moon on the dark ocean. I was wandering abreast the aisle, talking to the books. You know, books can read our mind and lead our heart. The library became a cave with all its treasures of human's wisdom. As I was deep in that cave, alone, I heard an omnipotent voice from above. The library will be closing in five minutes. If you want to borrow or return books, please come to the counter. The announcement had a terror-inducing effect. Like Alibaba, I must leave the cave with all the treasures of human wisdom I could carry before the foreign thieves return. At once, I headed to the nearest exit. This one, this one, this one. 
on the shelves, the dictionaries, and the Lonely Planet series closing on me, but I got past them. The exit was steps away when, from the corner of my eyes, emerged a tiny book on the bottom rack of a shelf. Someone put the book back in the shelf midway. So I stopped and pulled it out. The title read, Seven Years in Tibet by Heinrich Herr. What is it about, you wonder? It's an autobiography of an Austrian mountaineer who, in World War II, was trying to climb the Himalaya. He was imprisoned in India, then a British colony, but he escaped with a fellow climber. They crossed the border, entered Tibet, and traveled all the way to Lhasa, spending seven years there. Sir Hara even became a tutor of the Dalai Lama, who was then a teenager. Now, the magnificence of the story is that for hundreds of years, no foreigner ever entered Lhasa. And when someone did, wasn't a Chinese, wasn't an Indian, but a Westerner. Now the book is out the seven years in Tibet. The book is forbidden in Tibet. But that I will tell you more in chapter six. Now back to the story. Seven years in Tibet, filed in the college library. I borrowed the book that night. In the next two days, I was fully immersed in it and actually finished binge watching a season of The Bachelor while seven years in Tibet collected dust in a corner. Now, when I finally got to the book, I was enraptured by the glacier-capped mountains, the buttermilk, the conversations with the Dalai Lama. So much so that I put visiting Tibet in my list of things to do before 25. I also wish to visit Europe to live in an urban apartment with eclectic furniture. Two, two, two. The usual tools that girls put in their wish list when they outgrow Santa Claus. Off topic, but when do girls outgrow Santa Claus? Hmm. Aha. <laughs> When have you been bad this year? Sounds naughty. <laughs> anyhow, anyhow. <laughs> okay, well, at least traveling to Europe and a stylish apartment were sensible wishes. Visiting Tibet wasn't a wish, more a sub delirium throwing the mix for fun. I shared the list on Facebook with my best friend. We had a good laugh and forget about it. Forgot about it. Four years went by. By then, I had graduated from university moved to Tokyo for grad school, 
met and loved a great man, went job hunting, lost the great man, and got a job. Now, this was August twenty nineteen. I was working part time while writing my thesis. One day. Without warning, Facebook reminded me of my to do before twenty five list. My best friend texted me half jokingly. You are almost twenty five, and you haven't done any of these things. Ouch! My birthday is in February. Only six months until twenty five. It struck me that my friend was not only right, but relevant. I procrastinated because I was there to poor, but now, now I made some money. I might as well spend money like people with some money do. Another thing. I was going through a. Tough breakup. I realized that nothing was certain, because I was very certain about our relationship, and yet it ended. That dissolution taught me that everything was possible, not just the bad things. But the good things as well, the great things. A change of perspective was in order. I remember going through my to-do list, looking up the price to visit Europe. Basically, a kidney and an eyeball <laughs> to find. A great apartment, and to furnish it with characteristics, another kidney, an eyeball. The possible to-do list depleted, and I just wanted to get one thing done. To bed, however, was always wishful thinking. Not a real option. Defeated, I went for a stroll. So my neighborhood is the Shimokitazawa, the hippie neighborhood of Tokyo, the time capsule of the eighties, baggy denim and black circle glasses, the hub. Of subculture. So in August, Shimokitazawa celebrated many weekly street markets. That breezy evening, I stroll into one of those street markets. Stalls were erected next to buskers who blew fire out of their throats. College kids and grandpas alike. Walk about in all sorts of flashy outfits. Next to them, imported English publications spill over the brim of the sidewalk. Next to handmade leather pouches and garden miniature houses, dream catchers, and vinyl records. It was like a carnival. I've never been to one, but I guess that's what's like. At one stall, there were some comics in the series "Adventure of Tang Tang," a childhood favorite, a Belgium comic slash cartoon series. On top of that pile of comic was an album. With a red circle in the middle of 
endless snow background. The black marble font. Title: Red. Tang Tang. Into bed. <laughs> Quite funny because fate would usually be more subtle. <laughs> This time, fate took a pretty heavy-handed, in-your-face approach. Not even trying to hide its attempt. Then, then, I decided to buy all the Tang Tang comics, a hundred yen each. And of course, I also decided to go to Tibet. You, you cannot miss the sign this time. Ah, uh, here. Actually, it's the Tang Tang series I brought. I bought from that time. You know, this this very album was bestowed with an award by the Dalai Lama himself, no less. You see, everything. Was decided for me. In as much as I had a choice, I could only make choices among the options that fate offered. Some events were destined to happen. This time, fate would take me. Across the oceans, through a thirty-six-hour train ride, into the monasteries and palaces, to the monk debate, to the bar where the Dalai Lama wrote love poems, <laughs> yeah, to the Tibetan lion-sized mastiff, to 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 the usual tools that a great Adventure entails. That was how my adventure to Tibet began. Do come back for next week to prepare for the trip. Don't you skip strength training. For now, good night, good night. Oh, this is so cold.